We've studied mechanical weathering and chemical weathering. You should be able to define each and describe several specific mechanical and chemical weathering processes, noting the specific rocks and or the specific climates where you would expect to find each of these processes. Now I'd like to briefly note some general factors that might affect how fast a rock weathers. I'm going to list five factors here so that you can get them into your notes and then we'll go back and discuss each one of them in more detail. Mineral composition of the rock, the presence of openings like cracks and faults and pores, the interaction between mechanical and chemical weathering, climate, and human activity. So each of these factors may influence the rate that a rock weathers. First, the mineral composition of the rock may affect how fast it weathers. Simply said, some minerals are more susceptible to weathering than others, especially when we're thinking about chemical weathering. Iron-rich minerals are susceptible to oxidation. Feldspars are prone to hydrolysis, and a whole host of minerals are prone to dissolution, especially under acidic conditions. On the other hand, there's some minerals like quartz that are quite resistant to chemical weathering. So the mineral composition of a rock can greatly influence how fast the rock may weather. Second, the presence of openings in a rock is very important. Your textbook discusses this at length. The type of opening depends on the rock. Openings might include pore spaces, joints, faults, air vesicles, and solution cavities. Review your textbook if you are unsure on what any of these openings are. The more openings in a rock, the more opportunities for water and other substances to get in. Thus, more openings generally means more chemical weathering, because water can get into these openings. It also likely means more root wedging. And, if the climate is right, more frost wedging. Additionally, joints and other openings can allow weathering to occur much deeper than it would otherwise occur. Notably, this is how soil formation begins and how soil formation can actually begin to occur well below the surface. Joints are the most important type of openings in rocks, and joints are commonly present in all rock types. Joints can form as igneous rocks cool, or as any rock unit is exposed to stress. Some rock units have master joints that are simply large joints that extend for long distances. In textbook figure 15.4 shown here, you can see how joints impact the weathered landscape. Let's also consider half dome. We can see lots of evidence of exfoliation, as discussed earlier, but the sheer cliff of half dome is a joint. Remember, a glacier did not carve half dome. Rather, a joint existed, and likely water got into it. And what happened next? Likely frost wedging, and perhaps root wedging, and perhaps chemical weathering all played a role. And then it was all followed by mass wasting, as the material on one side of the joint plummeted to the valley floor. A third factor that affects the rate of weathering is the interaction between mechanical weathering and chemical weathering. Increased mechanical weathering leads to an increase in chemical weathering. Why? Well, simply, breaking a rock into smaller pieces results in more surface area for water to interact with, within the rock. More contact with water leads to more chemical weathering. Increased chemical weathering can also lead to an increase in mechanical weathering, as many of the products of chemical weathering are softer and or easier to break than the original minerals in the rock. The fourth factor that affects chemical weathering rates is climate. Climate plays a huge role in whether a rock weathers quickly or slowly. 
The same rock in two different climates will weather at completely different rates. Interestingly, this is also why climate is the most important factor in soil formation. Different soils can form from the same rock in two different climates. We have already discussed the importance of water in weathering. Thus, wetter climates tend to experience more weathering. Additionally, in general, most chemical processes, including oxidation, hydrolysis, and dissolution, occur faster at higher temperatures. Thus, warmer climates may experience more weathering. Of course, one exception for temperature is frost wedging, which will be most rapid in climates that experience freeze and thaw conditions. But in general, climates that are both warm and wet will tend to experience the most weathering, contrasted with cool and dry climates or even just dry climates, you tend to have very little weathering. Check out figure 15.14 shown here and notice that hot and wet climates, like the AF climates for instance, will likely experience the most weathering. Humans can also directly affect how fast rocks weather. There are several ways that humans can affect weathering rates. One of the most important ways humans impact weathering is by releasing carbon, sulfur, and nitrogen oxides into the atmosphere when burning fossil fuels. These carbon oxides, sulfur oxides, and nitrogen oxides combine with water that's already present in the atmosphere to form several weak acids, including carbonic acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and nitrous acid. The addition of acids to the atmosphere results in slightly more acidic rainfall and more acidic fog and more acidic snow. This increased acidity in precipitation is not such that it's going to hurt you when the raindrop falls on you, but rather it does increase the acidity of lakes and streams and the ocean. This results in increased dissolution of rocks especially limestone and marble. Pause the video here and make sure that you can confidently answer these two learning check questions.